Greetings, viewers. This is CP666 signing on for, of course, another video of this Compact Presario desktop computer. I will agree with one of the comments on the previous video. I really do like the styling of this case. I'm not really a big fan of the clamshell design cases. I really just think that they could be so much better especially in terms of ventilation and interior space. But this one's actually not too bad, as we'll see in a minute. Just to look at the front. See, there's the door over all of the uh, ports here. I will profess that this door is kind of a piece of junk. It's very easy to open, but not so easy to close. And I will also admit, I'm not really entirely sure what these things are for. Really love that, but I really don't know. One thing that you didn't see in the previous video with the case, this is basically right now just going to be a, a hardware overview kind of thing, because, you know, it's, let's face it, I didn't really do a very good hardware overview in the first video, but uh, if you take a look at this side, and move it over here, you'll see a stylized cue up there. The camera will focus, and before I continue, I'm going to say right now, because somebody is probably going to massively complain about this if I don't mention I got a lot of camcorders. I admit this. I've got more than I really probably need to have. But my choice for this video came down to two options. The camcorder I'm using right now, which is a Panasonic Comcorder PV11D VHSC unit, or this one, the JVC Mini DV camera. What sold me on this Panasonic was the fact that I could plug it into the wall, because let's face it, nobody really wants to deal with batteries, certainly not me. But I probably would have been better off choosing the JVC, because this thing, trying to get this thing to focus, and more so trying to get it to maintain focus, is like trying to find hay in a needle stack. It's, it's that bad, it really is, it's just terrible. And I, really don't profess to understanding why. It gets worse when I have the wide-angle lens like I do now on the camcorder. It's really a darn shame because this is a nice camera otherwise. But we're going to trudge it out through this. I have to take it out anyways because I forgot to put the, the camcorder light back in the bag and I, so I need to take the bag out in order to put the light back in the bag. So I might as well just use the camera. It's right here. So You can see if I manage to get this to move. It's not the easiest thing in the world to move. That's one of the things about these clamshell cases I really don't like is the fact that they're very difficult to maneuver, especially on a bed when really you shouldn't be maneuvering electronics on your bed, but anyway. This little eye symbol, you see that? Well, you could see it if the camera would maintain focus. Please say I don't have to use manual focus. Now the focus doesn't like it, but you can see it, that little eye there. I don't profess to know what that is. Likewise, I think there was probably supposed to be something here. And I don't really know what would have been there. It looks like there should have been something. But it doesn't really attach to anything. So if somebody would let me know, that might be interesting. I'd really like to know about that. Hardware-wise, I haven't really changed anything. So we've still got the same old DVD burner, CD-ROM drive. This is the original CD-ROM floppy drive, which, like I said, is not the original floppy drive. I don't know who makes it. You might take a look at that in a second. And something else about this case that was rather common for the time is this down here. If we open this up, you can see it looks like it's got space for CDs. You could put a CD in there. So we'll grab this CD. And we'll go ahead and put that in there. Well, I don't know if that's totally what you're supposed to do, but... Uh, it does fit, you can see there, there's now a CD in the computer. Just pull it out like that. Usually you can fit more though, I don't, I don't know, maybe that's not intended for a CD, maybe that's for something else. This HP computer here also has the same thing. I can go ahead, you might not be able to see it at this angle, but if I lift this up, underneath there, you might be able to just barely make it out there is a CD thing. This doesn't latch very well. The LEDs on this thing are rather dim. I think they're, they designed this for maybe three. 
Looks like there should be an LED under there. Maybe there even is. I've never seen it come on. Maybe that's for network activity. And the power LEDs here. There's an LED behind this for the hard drive activity. They're very dim, so it's obvious to me that this thing was a high hour unit. And it's also obvious to me, for a number of reasons, that whoever was using this computer, whoever bought it and ultimately set it up for use, really knew what they were doing. Because if you saw the first video, you'll know that even though this thing has got a Celeron sticker on it, you might be able to just barely make out here. Here's another thing I'm not fond of this reason I'm not fond of this camcorder. It is the incredibly slow zoom. Look at that. That's just terrible. You see the Celeron badge there, and also the design for Microsoft Windows 98 badge. Which is kind of odd, considering this thing was designed in May of 2000. But I don't remember off the top of my head the release dates for Windows Millennium Edition and for Windows 2000. I think Millennium Edition was released in 99, though. So, theoretically, this thing should have been you know, a Windows Millennium Edition machine, but I don't know, maybe Compaq realized that Windows ME was garbage. Who knows? Long before everybody else did. Although, I think everybody figured it out pretty quickly that it was rather trash. Tommy upgraded this thing to a Pentium 3, which is a much, much desired upgrade. I mean, don't get me wrong. I have a, and this probably puts me as being uh, rather unique amongst the, uh, the field of computer users, I've got a soft spot for the Intel Celeron processor. The only ones that I really think are better off as scrap metal are the Netburst-based Celerons. In fact, Netburst-based CPU, Netburst CPUs in general, I probably shouldn't be making a video right now, but uh, Netburst-based CPUs in general are really just not worth having. But the Celerons are even worse. Remember the Celeron D? That one was really the most undesirable. I thought my UPS just clipped in off over there. I wonder why. The power's not blinking like it was last night anyway. But Celeron D, oh, that was that was that was a branding mistake and the CPUs weren't even that good to begin with. Remember the Pentium D, first of all. The Pentium D was basically two Prescott or Press Hot Pentium 4 CPU cores on the same chip effectively giving you a dual core CPU, a, a true dual core CPU. It didn't have hyper-threading, but it was a true dual core. The Celeron D was a single core CPU. At least all the ones I've ever seen, they were single core CPUs. Why would you call it a Celeron D when the point of the D in the brand was to indicate it was a dual core CPU? If it's going to be single core, it doesn't make any sense to me. But anyway, that's a significant digression. I didn't really want to get into a sort of rant about that. That, uh, that was just bad. I, but I really hated the Celeron D. Of course, that was what swayed me over to AMD's project, products for a while. Yeah, I probably shouldn't be making a video. I should just go to bed. Even though it's only 10.15, so it's not even that late yet. Um, but that swayed me over to AMD for a while. And then I realized that pre-built AMD products are actually kind of crappy. That's not to say all of them were. Right? There were a lot of Dell Optiplexes and Dell Dimensions specifically that I was rather fond of that used AMD processors. The C521 certainly wasn't one of them, though. And once again, I make mention of a digression and go further on the digression. All right, so let's go ahead and flip this thing around. Have a look at the back. Maybe you'll get a look at a free Windows 98 license. It's got Windows 98 Second Edition. Well, you can't see it. We'll go ahead and we'll take a look here. Notice that this power supply does not have an off switch, which is kind of annoying, but certainly not uncommon, not, not unheard of in these days. There's the fan. I think it was, yeah, it was UXW Bill who said that this is probably a rebadged high pro unit. And based on the like the look of the uh, power supply, I'd be willing to bet that yes, this is probably a high pro unit. It looks rather high quality. Uh, it's not certainly not a best tech, or a worst tech, as most people call them. Here you look at the ports. See, we got uh, PS2 ports. This is a real computer. Two USB ports. They are 1.1, as far as I can remember. Serial, parallel, VGA. There's a game port. Well, you could fudge that and plug a MIDI, MIDI device into it. Adapter. There's our audio. 
and there is a network card. I'm curious if that's an upgraded network card, because, as was mentioned, there were a couple of things that I said in the video that I really, I knew better than to say, but that's just one of those things that, uh, while you're making an unscripted video, you're bound to make mistakes, and, uh, unfortunately, YouTube got rid of the freaking annotation feature, that would have been perfect to try and correct some of these mistakes, but, alas, such is the way that things go. It's a Google product, it's nice and unusable. I need a drink. I got some, uh, nice homemade iced tea here. No lemon, but that's alright. I mean, could have easily added lemon if I really wanted it. The only thing that would make it better is if I had ice. But I don't like to put ice in my drinks because then it, it just melts and waters it down. That is disgusting. I didn't clean the back off. I probably should have done that, but I won't be certainly doing that soon enough. I had mentioned that this was probably an expand or an added expansion card. That's not necessarily true. A lot of these systems, from the time that this thing would have been made, did actually come stock with Ethernet cards installed. So, I guess there's one thing. I knew that, but, of course, like I said, there's that whole thing of an unscripted video again. And I'm going to try and open this case on camera. I may not be able to. Hopefully I don't run out of uh, tape time on this. I really don't want to have to use more than one tape. That's another thing. Mini DV tape would give me 60 minutes. 60 minutes would be more than good enough for this, but this only gives me 30. And this stupid case is getting stuck again. I hate this. Come on! You know, I think it might actually be broken. Do I have a screwdriver up here? No, I don't think I have a screwdriver. So I guess I am, well, screwed. I'm going to have to try to pull it off without using any tools. Come I'm getting mad. I, I, I am not impressed with this case. I'm going to try and do this without speeding it up this time, but... Uh, I don't know. This, you know, I could say all the, the good things I want about the, the fact that this clamshell case is actually really decent, but... I mean, uh, why? I don't understand why this case does not come off. It doesn't really make sense to me. Do I need, like, a jackhammer in order to get this thing off, or what? Well, here's a wrench. Let's see if I can get any leverage on this thing. Preferably without killing myself. Or scratching up the case finish at the same time. Oh, dear. Well, that's not very good. I was hoping to be able to open this on camera. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the incredibly professional thing. I'm going to use a multimeter lead to open the case. Yeah, take that. This case will come open. And it will do it on video. Thought I broke the multimeter lead here for a second. There we go. See? Always use what you have around with you. So There we go. Wasn't that case safe? May 27th of 2000. That's when the case was made. So, yeah, mid-2000s. Uh, mid would have been about right for one of these. All right, I'm gonna have to stop the camera here so I can go ahead and give you a more detailed look inside the case because this tripod is massively in my way. Hey, liberated from the tripod. Now we can have a look at the inside of the case. You can see the power supply here, branded compact. I'll try and get a better look at this. All right, I need to just like die off because that is massively a focus, there we go. Product of China, unfortunately, but that's all right. Let's see if we can get a good look at the wattage of this. 145 watts. Well, you could see that before I put it across the lot. Maximum 145. When was the last time you saw a PC power supply that could put out a maximum of 145 watts? It's been a very long time. Or we can see inside it. The heat sinking is a little bit weak. But the component sides actually do look pretty decent. And the heat sinks are not like ridiculous, tiny little 
good for sheet metal or anything like that with a lot of cheap power supplies. This thing could probably use a really good dusting. But there we can see in the previous video I made mention that this was a PGA 370 socket. You should be able to see that a little bit better with this camera, provided it stays in focus. And you can see PGA 370, which is the Pentium 3 socket. This is one of the nice Celerons, or would have been one of the nice Celerons if it wasn't upgraded to a Pentium 3 and of its own right, which just makes it that much better. Here you can see a lot of the other stuff. I wonder what that is. Well, I know what the lens cap is, but it is some uh, interesting looking dust right there on the computer. I wonder if that's CMOS batteries, the original battery. It says Toshiba on it. So it probably is. I don't think you can buy Toshiba batteries. I really didn't check to see if it was hopelessly dead and if it held any of the settings, but I suppose we'll find out when we plug this thing in again, because I haven't used it in a while. Let's pull this network card and have a look at that. Here's the network card. In one of my uh, previous videos, where I was you know, looking at the inside of the computer, somebody had the nerve to make a comment saying, I'm surprised you didn't blow anything up because you don't have a continuous path to ground. And in my quest to irk as many people as possible, I am probably going to get some diehard computer aficionados right up my case by saying this, but I think that a continuous path to ground is completely unnecessary and a waste of time. If you touch something that's grounded, as I do every time I go to work on a computer, and you don't move much, certainly not moving your feet on the ground, then it's really difficult for static electricity to build up, especially in a room like this where the humidity is absolutely off the charts. So there's where I come from on that standpoint. I don't see any, uh, you know, stickers on this that would say compact spares or anything, you know, replaced with a compact model number, part number of this. It's got a real tech chipset on it. Maybe we'll get some focus on. We can see some more of the supporting logic. Also note that I'm not touching the card or the card edge. That's another uh, another way to prevent it. It won't do it won't be a perfect protection, but it will certainly offer you something. The other thing that clues me in that that's probably a replacement card is the screw, which I seem to have misplaced. I don't wonder where that went. <laughs> I had it a couple seconds ago. It was in my hand. And now it's just not. So I think I'm going to have to stop the video and find the screw now. Awesome. I located it. It's right here. Probably not going to focus on that on its own. Oh, look at that. Sometimes I really am amazed at technology. But uh, there's the screw. We could compare that with the, the rest of the screws in the system for all these slot blanks. I think you'll agree with me that they are quite a bit different. It looks like I'm going to have to... Oh, well, we'll focus on that. That's interesting. Must have been zoomed in a little bit too far, but they look like that. So, uh, that screw is probably not original to the system, which leads me to, once again, believe that uh, it's probably a replacement card. Well, I guess we're going to be going on a little bit of a rant in this video, because you can see something looks a little different. I loathe manufacturers who design cases that are toolless purely just because they're toolless. They don't design them to be easy to use, they don't design them to be discoverable. Really, frankly, it just makes you wonder what the hell they were thinking. Remember that latch I was talking about right down here that I didn't understand the purpose of? I didn't realize that there were two of them because the little smoke plastic bezel covers this. And so I was wondering why the hell I couldn't get the floppy drive out of the system. You know, I'm pushing on this latch, pulling down on the latch, and nothing's happening. Why can't I get this out of here? Well, as it turns out, you're supposed to remove this. Oh, you're not supposed to remove it, you're supposed to open it. 
Um, and there's this thing right here that I also couldn't figure out the purpose of. Normally it's in this position like that. You can see it's got a lock symbol on it. Well, maybe you can see it's got a lock symbol on it. If you pull it out like this, you can see it's got an unlock symbol on it. Well, what the hell does that mean? That is actually a locking mechanism for this little smoke bezel. And you need to pull that off, and then, well, it just probably still won't work, you could pull out your disk drives. Wow, what a pain. This is a Samsung. I've never seen Samsung floppy drive before. But this is actually a genuine compact, so this is not a replacement, which is kind of odd, considering that it really does look like it's a replacement. But it's not. It's genuine compact. See, it says, replace with compact spare. It's got a compact part number on it, so that is the original floppy drive. So that's uh, interesting. I really did think that was a replacement floppy drive, but then again, it does look a little bit different. Now I'm not going to be able to get this back in there, am I? Once again, I have a detest detestment for toolless cases that are designed purely to be toolless and not easy to work with without tools. So, I'm going to unplug all these cables because I think that's probably the best way to do this. Although it's going to be a little bit of a pain, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to do that off camera because I've only got about 8 minutes of tape left. I am going to need two tapes for this. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and lift this back up because I... Man, this thing actually weighs quite a fair amount. I'm going, I'm going to uh, check out this hard drive. I do know that it is very likely an upgrade. I don't really think this thing would have come with a 40 gigabyte hard drive stock, but you never know. Of course, I was already proven wrong with the floppy drive. I wish I could find my extended screwdriver right now because it really would help in this situation, but alas, I don't know where it is, so I'm just going to have to do without. And I just lost the screw, that's lovely. Just what I needed to have happen. One video. Alright, let's pull this drive out. Let the computer sit down so it doesn't fall rather ungracefully. Well, I don't see a compact sticker on it anywhere. But I do see something interesting. Go ahead and take a look. We can see it is indeed a Samsung spin point drive. 40 gigabytes in size. I'm not sure what Victor means. Maybe it's a code name for the firmware. Take a look at that date on there. 2001-11. So, if, assuming this is not, you know, new old stock part, and also assuming that it is not the original drive, although it's probably not, because I see that one of the screws is missing. Um, well, this is this thing was not upgraded too long after after it was purchased. That's really rather interesting. So somebody was obviously displeased with the amount of storage space they had right off the bat. Maybe they did all the upgrades at once. I don't know. I'm not going to keep this drive in there. I'm actually going to be putting in a 10 gigabyte Western Digital drive because that's more, you know, period correct than a 40 gigabyte hard drive is. So I'm going to do that, and well, we'll come back. I change of plan. Actually, I decided to uh, grab a smaller capacity drive, mostly because, well, to grab a drive is going to take a lot of finessing of a pile of crap and finessing is definitely the right word for it. That is the very definition of a disaster over there. I'm going to have to get right down to cleaning that up, but uh, I'm probably going to have to find a jumper for this. I don't know, but uh, you can actually see something interesting here. The camera will focus on it. There we go. You can see a Digital Equipment Corporation logo. Yeah, that's right. This came out of a deck PC really wish I still had that system. Well, this one didn't come out of that particular system. I, I know what it did come out of. It came out of an example of the same one. Digital PC 5000. It's a 
Pentium, I think it was an original Pentium design. Yeah, Pentium, Pentium 233, 266, or maybe a 300 even. If you got a real hot rod. And, um, just a really nice modular design that I've never seen before in another system. And I thought it was cool. And it really would be nice to find another one, if only to make a video about it. So I'm going to put this back into place, which is probably going to involve a swear word, although I know how to do it now. There's two little hooks that are supposed to go up into the, into the cage assembly like that. This just slides into place, like so. And then, of course, you got to put the screw in, making sure that it's not the screw that's supposed to go in the hard drive. I'm probably brushing up against the microphone, and I do apologize if that is true. Oh my gosh, what an incredible pain in the ass. <laughs> you know, I was going to try and not even say swear words like that, even though that's not really a swear word. But, oh, for crying out loud, this is really turning into quite the production. All I want is to insert a screw in this hole right here. I want to put it in the system. Like that. It's still not really working too well. That's better than the first attempt. There we go. Now it's in place. So, now I got that. I'm probably going to find that I'm going to have to put a jumper in it in order to get it to work right. I've got, what, about three minutes left? We'll cable it up. I'll have to switch tapes on my camcorder here. But I'll cable this drive up. First, the big IDE cable. It's really amazing what we once had to work with in computers. All this cabling really makes it hard to do any kind of cable management. But at least it means that people won't be using infernal zip ties in their computers. Man, I hate, I hate it when people use zip ties in computers. It makes it impossible to work on them. So there's that. That drive is now in place. So I think the only thing left to do now is to put on the cover, make sure the drive works, and install Windows. And I am now out of tape. Wonderful. Made it just in time. Well, I probably could have continued using the other tape, but it doesn't really matter. Might as well just start afresh. And, uh, well, afresh is what we're going to do. So, uh, I've got uh, the system hooked up. Got the new hard drive in place. I'm going to go ahead and fire it up and hope that it posts. I'm also going to hope that the camera is in focus. There is no video. I was doing this before, too. Maybe the VGA port is dud. Hard drive is jumping correctly. Let's pull the hard drive. Good thing I didn't put the side panel on the case. <laughs> okay, let's just pull it. Still no power on South Fest. Hmm. Not really sure why that is. It doesn't really make any sense to me. Unless it is posting. And I'm just getting no video because my KVM switch is sitting correctly, which is not. Uh, oh. Maybe something. something ever so slightly wrong with the optical guys. Now we're not getting anything out of it. Okay. So here's the 
Let me put my one that out. Unlock this. Let off. I break it for us. Let's break it off. Or the office will do that. So I'll do that off camera. No use wasting camera space doing this. So I figured it out. You're probably getting a wonderful look at my head right now, which is completely out of focus. But either I've got a faulty memory module or a faulty memory module socket on the motherboard because I pulled one of the memory modules and the system posted the first time. So I did change the jumper on the added optical drive from cable select that it was set to to master because the other drive was set to slave. And usually I don't like mixing cable select like cable select and slave or master like that, so I just went ahead and jumped it into master because it's going to be the master drive anyways. Now I'm just trying to cable it all up, which is proving to be annoying. So I'm going to have to probably run mem test on this. Maybe I'll add the other memory module back at a later time. Where's the maybe buttons? I can't see a damn thing that I'm doing. Am I a light that's in any reasonable length of my arm right now? Yeah, I do. Okay, I have no idea why the camcorder decided to turn off. That's kind of annoying. Let's go ahead and try and get that into focus. Memory size error, 164. And somebody said, UXW Bill once again actually, said that IBM duplicated pretty much everything. Alright, we didn't do a UBCD. Uh, but what was I going to say? Oh, yes. That Compact duplicated pretty much everything IBM did up to the PS2 line. And that's what I was going to say. That 164 error message is a PS2 error message. I don't think I finished my thought. I don't think it's seen the hard drive. I really don't. The hard drive light's not solid on, but... I, oh, there it is. WDC AC23200. It's a 3.2 gigabyte hard drive with two platters. Smart is disabled. I don't know why that is. It shouldn't be. Why is it disabled? That's huh. Doesn't really report much in the way of attributes, though. Because I've been really early in the days of smart data. I just really want to see that it's there. I don't know what the SCSI is. What is this? Ah, that's interesting. The SCSI device is showing up. Unless maybe that is one of the... Capacity is the same as the hard drive. But I only see one optical drive. I hope I have both of them plugged in. <laughs> Now let's go into the BIOS. And I forget what key you need to push to go into the BIOS. And I gave me a 301 keyboard error. Ugh. F10. Probably not going to work because... There we go. English, system information, it's not in there. Okay, it's not telling me what drives are installed. Oh, that's fine. I want to see what's on the... That's too bad. I thought you could see that on this. And it's not. Well, whatever. It did keep the time and date. That's, that's nice. That's nice of it. So now, actually I'll probably boot straight up into the uh, boot CD. Or it just won't do anything at all. Well, both the optical drives are seen. 
Oh, I already have a UV CD in there. Huh. I only had about two alternate boot CDs. There was one in the, uh, the dropsical drive. Alright, so let's get uh, Windows 98 installed on this thing. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to show the entire process. I might uh, time lapse it. I think I'm going to need a boot disk. I think I'm probably going to need a boot disk. Now yeah, we'll time lapse it. Oh, look at this. Boot from CD ROM. Okay, party people in the house.
audio. We don't have a built-in sound card anyway. Definitely in 16 color mode. Alt W, and Alt C. Go to system properties, settings, that 16 color is the only option that we get. 40 by 480 is the only option that we get. That's all. So everything works though. Everything's here. Should be IE4, the worst browser ever invented, designed. What an evil piece of crap. Oh, it wants me to set up network access. Forget that garbage. So, my computer. Go into properties. And everything works. PS2 compatible mouse port. Is that the mouse? I wonder. Maybe that's the mouse. Yeah, the multimedia audio driver is not found. I don't really care about that. So. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. Can't think of anything else to do. So, thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And uh, this is CP666 signing off. Hope to see you next time. Till then.